Welcome to Movie Friends. My name is Seth. If you listen to this show regularly, you're probably aware by now that I love films. One of the reasons why is because I also love people, and I love learning about them and how they see the world. There's something special that happens when we see ourselves on screen, but it shouldn't be a prerequisite for appreciating a good movie. Equally as exciting is when we learn something new, when a world is laid out before us and the creators say, hey, come watch this. You can learn a few things about me in the process. My guest for today is Carl Joseph E. Papa. He's a writer and director, and his film The Missing was selected by the Philippines to represent their country for the Best International Feature Award at this upcoming year's Oscars. This was the first time that the Philippines had selected an animated film to represent them. When I recorded this interview, we were still waiting to see if The Missing would be selected for a nominee for Best International Feature, and unfortunately it wasn't. While that would have been an incredible honor for the team and for Carl, we know that award seasons come and award seasons go, but what remains are the films that connect with us and connect us with other people. This is my interview with Carl Joseph E. Papa, and I hope you enjoy it. So, Carl, thank you very much for uh, for joining me this morning. I know it's morning here, but it's quite late there, so I appreciate it. It's okay. I just got off work, so I'm still awake. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for interviewing me. It's really nice time talking to other people about the film or about the, the Philippines or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm excited. We made this connection quite recently, and so normally I try to like watch all of your stuff. And last night I was like, okay, I just need to learn everything that there is to learn about the history of Filipino cinema in like one day. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Wiki, so. <laughs> yes, that's right, that's right. <laughs> that's a big help. That's right. So you're born in the Philippines? Yes, yes I am. A- about when were you born? You don't need to reveal your, your whole uh, age, but. <laughs> totally, I'm 19, I'm born in the Philippines around 1986. Okay, very cool, cool, cool. Yeah. And so was film something that you were, into i know that you went to school for programming yeah i I studied computer science when i was in college but actually i grew up in a household where we watch a lot of film like my mom introduced me to watching classic films like she would buy cds well back then we only have vcds of like casablanca of a gone with the wind a wizard of Oz. so it was My mom, who introduced me to those movies, and my dad loves watching those, you know, big budget Hollywood films or war movies. Mm. (laughs) So it's kind of a balance of, you know, uh, more drama movies and then the action movies. Sure, sure, sure. But I actually fell in love with animation ever since I was young. I love to draw. Yeah, I I really love drawing, making something from scratch. So did you ever think like oh i could make these movies or was that something that came like after college when you're already used to sitting at a computer for hours at a time (laughs) (laughs) actually when i was in third year college my dad said to me that oh maybe you should transfer to filmmaking Mm. or take up film as a a career but yeah no i said uh no I may not earn as much money as I should if I, <laughs> if, I if I pursued um, programming. Yeah. So I finished um, computer science, and then but back back then um, I was really fascinated with filmmaking. Yeah, but I have no access to it. I I I don't have a camera. I have you know the small cameras that uh, that only takes pictures, yeah. not videos. Yeah. <laughs> What I did was probably the first months of working, I saved up. And then after a couple of months, I bought myself a first my first camera. Awesome. <laughs> and that's, I think, where I started making films. So were you just making like short films on your own? Yes, uh, short films. Actually, at first, we were just shooting really stupid short films. Okay. <laughs> like It was just me and my cousin fighting, so... Oh, so it's an action film. Very cool. But, Very cool. but I, I, I think I learned a lot from there. Like I, I learned how to edit on my own, mm-hmm. and yeah, and you know, 
um practice with the shots and stuff but and then when i got serious with it um i started probably when i was introduced to world cinema it, around in college that you know i i tinkered around with making you know short films about the philippines or but it was again um my my love for animation is <laughs> took over got it got it now i know that you have a lot of love for animation in the philippines and in a in another interview that i saw with you you said that you have made around roughly like 25 percent of the animated films from the philippines is that correct uh yeah i'm not sure with the numbers sure, sure, but sure. there is probably uh i think there is around 12 that 12 or 15 uh -huh. that came out feature films from the philippines and i made three of them so wow that makes you like the filipino walt disney do you know that like <laughs> <laughs> That's, like, that's pretty amazing. Far from it. That's pretty, no, <laughs> that's pretty it. great, man. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. But um, the, the Philippines, I think right now, I we have a lot of young filmmakers who are making really good short film, yeah. short animated films that I really hope that in the future they get to make like a feature film uh, about Filipinos. Or, mm -hmm. I, I can only hope for that. So. Yeah. So you are... You're a director. You're from the Philippines. Your film has been selected for the entry for the Philippines for the Oscars coming up next year, which is mm. amazing. Like that's I can't imagine. I can't imagine making a film that people see. But then for my country to select it to represent that country. Do you feel that pressure? Are you honored? Honored. Very much honored. And. Yes, there is pressure because, you know, um, it's not only me that I'm represent representing. It's actually the country yeah. <laughs> that, you know, you're trying to give voice to. So it's an honor, actually, and pretty much stunned when I first heard about, you know, the the, the Film Academy selecting our film to represent the Philippines. Um, because it's, it's uh, probably I, because I'm quite an outsider in the industry. Yeah. I mean... I only, you know, I, I come out out of hibernation every, <laughs> every <laughs> once in a while to make films. Yeah. So, uh, and then this year I made this. I mean, we've been making it for more than two years now. And now it still has legs. And now it was selected for uh, the Academy Awards. So it's, a, it's really surprising. And plus, it's the first uh, time that the Philippines has selected an animated film. Right for that category so it really means a lot right it really means a lot yeah i really can't I, my hat is off to you for being able to just navigate that and handle that i mean you know i wouldn't want to walk down the street and be like hey <laughs> <laughs> hey uh you know any amount of anything is like on my head so seriously that's that's pretty wild very much <laughs> So I know that this film, which I watched, and I watch a lot of a lot of movies, and a lot of movies follow the same story pattern. We know that there's structure, but there are also patterns that storytelling kind of falls into, and you see it repeated a lot. Your film has several moments that were very shocking and like kind of woke me up, you know, as I'm watching it. And I know that the film is partially autobiographical for you which first of all i just want to say you know thank you for telling this story i've seen stories like this told before and this one feels very real very real very raw so anyway thank you for sharing your story thank you thank you for watching it also and oh of course and i so i had actually heard about this movie i'd heard like some buzz about this movie and when we kind of connected about doing this i was like oh my gosh i can't believe <laughs> Because sometimes I'll get offers to talk to people and it's like something that I've never heard of. And, you know, you have to try to. But I was like, oh, this movie? Yeah, I know this movie. Yeah, definitely. Rotoscope yeah. animation from the Philippines, of course. For people who don't make films, sometimes filmmaking can seem like magical, you know. But we know that it is a lot of repetition. It's a lot of taking the same exact frame and you're looking at one frame <laughs> for a 
way too long <laughs> for hours. Yeah. And so <laughs> yes. what was it like for you to take something that's so personal and kind of put it through like the movie making process? Well, the main reason why I made a film in the film, The Missing in the first place was, you know, um, since it's very personal, I wanted it to be sort of a coping mechanism about what happened to bring to bring to life something that has died for uh, me for <laughs> for a long time so but to work on it you know especially in animation you, you have to look at frames for for like forever <laughs> 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 then you would look at a, a lot of frames and then you would play it in only 10 seconds mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah right so but i guess that process i mean that long process made it uh, i kind of needed that to be more meticulous because I, the goal of the film is to send this message across to come across as very sincere and not, you know, um, capitalize on right. on the negative negative thing that's happened. Right. But more of to tell the story and encourage people to talk. So yeah. that was the main goal. And I think that the animation and how long it took me to make it. I mean, not as long as other animated films, but. The repetition of you know doing the same thing over and over again um, made me more reminded of what I'm doing and what I'm doing this for. Hmm. You have a few different animation styles in this movie, yes. which is <laughs> now I've seen the movie, I enjoy the movie, so I don't I don't feel bad saying this. It is so risky to do that when you have gotten people to sit down and see your movie, and then. They're lulled into that state where they're they're experiencing it, they're believing it, they're watching it, and then you make a transition. That's a risky, risky thing to do. <laughs> but I think that you guys pulled it off. I think you pulled it off quite well. Thank you. So my question was: Did the animation changes come because of the subject matter? The, the main film is it's all like rotoscoping, and I think it looks great. By the way, like I was. Thank you. I'm a fan of a few of like uh, Richard Linklater's rotoscope films. It's not something that we see all the time, but I kind of wish we saw more. So the majority of the film is rotoscoped, but there's some sequences that are not. So was that, is it because you wanted to show the audience like, okay, this is a very different uh, setting that we're going into, or was it because of the subject matter? Actually, when I wrote down the story, I knew that, well, Probably I'm weird that way. Um, I knew that. <laughs> uh, I knew that there was going to be two styles to it. Okay. I mean, but I wanted those not to come off like I'm showing off or something. Yeah. <laughs> that I am doing this because I can do it. No, no. Right. right. Um, uh, the 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 two styles of animation that we use are actually complementary to uh the mental state of the protagonist. Right. Um, right. Uh, the uh, we use rotoscoping because in rotoscoping you have this um, certain feeling of confusion. You, mm-hmm. you start to question whether, oh, is this real? Is this not? Is it not? Or is it live action? Or right. is it animation? So that complements um, Eric's mental state because he is also at the pro- I mean at the duration of the film was he was also um, questioning whether things are real or not. Right. And as for the 2D hand-drawn animation, um, I wanted to to bring about a feeling of nostalgia and this feeling of like it's a memory of uh, it's memory of someone who's stuck in childhood. So I wanted it to appear um, um, very childlike and nostalgic, you know, something from the past. So. All of those um, complement whatever is happening to Eric. So that's the main reasons why I chose the two styles. I mean, rotoscope and the hand drawn. And you made your you made your main character and love interest animators, which I was like, this is uh, you know again like it's a cool little. I don't know how how did you feel about animating animators? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I I wanted it. To feel like um, when I look back at it, I mean, it's a slice of what I went through in life. So 
uh, well, I'm not an animator per se, but I do animation. Yeah. So I wanted to reflect that also in the film by, you know, adding that kind of flavor into it. Yeah, I can't imagine working on working on a computer screen of a dude working on a computer screen. And <laughs> <laughs> Plus, uh, I was also able to incorporate the, you know, uh, him being an animator to reflect uh, some an- some animation elements to the the visual style of the film. Um, not to spoil anyone, but there's, I mean, you would see this in the trailers, but there is a, you know, the checkered white and gray parts. I <laughs> loved that, and yeah, I don't, I don't think that that's quite a spoiler. <laughs> When we start the film, I mean, the main character is missing a mouth. And I was very confused. Like you had said, rotoscoping kind of takes you out of like your firm grasp on reality. You know, Mm -hmm. it's not quite it's not fully computer animated and it's not quite fully live people. And there are fun little things that you can do in that in between zone, one of which is he doesn't have a mouth and you don't need to do prosthetics or you know makeup or anything and i was so confused (laughs) at first because i was like oh is this like a style thing you know like are we just going to be missing elements of certain things and then as the film progresses um different things happen that are very interesting and cool and ultimately come about to mean something more than what we perceive them as as they're happening but the gray and white checkered <laughs> anyone who's worked with uh any type of any type of graphics uh there's like a background for vectors and mm-hmm. i was i was just so I, I don't know it was just so cool it was like such a weird little detail to add <laughs> that i think some people won't know what it is but if you know what it is mm-hmm. it's like that's one of the coolest choices I've ever seen to do in an animated Actually, it movie. Was a, it was a tough sell when we really when we were making it. Then people were saying, "Like, what the fuck is that?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, I think but, yeah, I, stuck to my guns. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like uh, I don't know if you I don't know if you've ever seen like the the really early uh, Daffy Duck cartoon where the pencil is like erasing him, like rubbing him out kind of Mm. thing. Like it feels like this current day's version of that. And yeah, Mm. I think some people won't know what that is, but for the people who do, it will definitely endear this film, you know, because they'll say, Oh, that's something that I know. And that's what this film is about. It's about, things that not everybody can relate to you know but it tells it very honestly i mean honestly some of the stuff i was like this is it's very it's very intense but it feels very honest and it feels very real and as a film lover and watcher that's what i i want to see real honest stuff so i i thought it was great i thought that was super cool i actually my wife is a programmer and as I was watching, it, I paused it and I said to her, hey, what do you call the vector background? And she was like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and so I had to show her and I was like freaking out about it. So I'm glad you I'm glad you brought it up. So, yeah, that was like one of my favorite little tiny little details. <laughs> so Thank you. Variety Variety picked your film, The Missing, to be part of the top 25 films to watch ahead of the Oscars, right? Yeah, I think um, Variety, what do you call this? This, this is... I think they made the prediction uh-huh. of, you know, the, the films that are probably in contention for the short list or for the final five nominees yeah. in the international feature category. And now we're at 20. So wow. <laughs> but that's good. It, I mean, I think there's around 80 films. Wow. So wow. Holy moly. It's, it's good. You know, um, probably the, the campaign that we're doing is, you know, making... <laughs> It's working out, so and people are watching it, and it, I'm actually it's quite good. It's a, it's a good feeling to you know I, I've been to LA uh, the past week, and people are reacting to it uh, positively, and I've gotten interviews about it about the film and them seeing it, and um, it's a good feeling that you know I I, I get to show this to the, to the world, and now 
variety, you know, <laughs> um, selected the film to as a as one of the content contenders in the Oscar. So, oh, it's an it's overwhelming. Actually, when I when I saw that article, I was watching a, a remastered version of Fallen Angels. Oh, very. But cool. I I had I, mean, <laughs> I had to step out <laughs> for a while because I was freaking out. Yeah. <laughs> I had to you know, I had to contain myself and then go back to the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I need to be. I need to recenter myself to you know to fully appreciate Wong Kar Wai. So. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Wong Kar Wai is the type of guy where I feel like I have to like. You, you don't throw on Wong Kar Wai, you know, like you don't throw on like uh, mm-hmm. Tarkovsky. You don't throw on Bergman. You have to like. Am I in the right zone? You know, turn to, my phone to off watch and... the film. <laughs> I'm awake, I'm alert, True. and I'm ready to be really sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I also saw Clockwork Orange, and I you know, just share yeah. it. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah. So who are some filmmakers that you would say maybe like inspire you, or you are kind of reaching to what they did, or whatever? Actually, you said one already. Um Richard Linklater. Oh, very cool. He's he's one of my favorite filmmakers of all time. Like when I was in the airplane going back and going to US, um, luckily they have before sunrise and before sunset on (laughs) on the plane. On the on the plane, so I had to watch it. Like I watched sunset on the airplane twice. Wow! (laughs) Wow! I mean, I'm Richard Linklater is like, you know, uh, I, I look up to him and, you know, probably I get to meet him one day. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. But, you know, um, um, yeah, him, um, truly, um, who else? Um, Michael, Mikkel, Haneke, Haneke. Oh, Haneke? Mikkel, Haneke. Yeah, Haneke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Haneke. wow. Holy moly. Yeah. yeah, that's another dude you don't just throw on. <laughs> <laughs> You have to be in the right set. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially Amour. I mean, that film, I mean, my God. I love that, you know, he rarely moves his camera and he he moves only if he has to. Mm. And it has, it has to have meaning rather than, you know, just showing stuff. So um, I also love uh, Isao Takahata and definitely sure. Hayao Miyazaki. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, those two. Actually, John Carney. Yeah, there you <laughs> I go. also love musicals. I mean, and I see is that is that a poster for Girlfriends in the back? Girlfriends, yeah, this one. Oh man, <laughs> I love Girlfriends. Love it. Yeah, it's very underrated and underseen. But yes, definitely. Well, at least in the Philippines, but I love it. Yeah. I mean, how it was written and how you know, uh, how it was told is just amazing. Yeah, I watched that. A little later in life and when i saw it it was like seeing the blueprint <laughs> you know i was like <laughs> oh this is the template for all of these types of movies but no one has seen this one and you see uh christopher guest who's you know he's the director and writer now but back then he was just a kid acting you see his whole butt <laughs> and i was like how does everyone not know <laughs> <laughs> about this movie where you see Christopher Guest walking around in the nude like come on this is a uh, this should be in the <laughs> like hall of fame <laughs> yeah uh i wish i wish a lot of people get to see it i mean it's 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 a really good film one of the best actually yeah i i yeah i agree man it's it's great so while we're on the subject of kind of underseen films i wanted to ask you are there any films from the Philippines that you would recommend to people who probably like, I can tell you I've seen uh, Manila in the claws of night. Mm, claws of Neon. Yeah. And that's like the mm-hmm. only outright Filipino film. I think that I've seen. Mm. Well, if you're watching, if you are in looking into Filipino cinema, you should, I, I mean, I would recommend, um, Kisap Mata. I forgot the English title. Wait, let me Google it sure, really sure. fast. <laughs> <laughs> Kisap Mata. It's a film by um, Mike DeLeon. Mm-hmm. The title is uh, In Just the Wink of an Eye. In Just the Wink of an Eye. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, Kisap Mata. Um, it's ni- it's a 1981 film from the Philippines. It's it's really good. Um, I think this is my favorite um, Filipino film of all time. Um, I would also recommend um, Senior Year. Uh, it's a it's a fairly recent one. It's uh, about um, high school students going through life. I mean, I love those kind of films. It's a film by Gerald Tarog. The a recent one that I loved is um, actually um, the missing is part of a local film festival where in um, they select ten films and then those ten films will be funded and those ten films will compete with each other. So wow. one of the films that were showing there was um, Gitling, uh, hyphen. That's that's the English title. Um, hyphen. Um, I think it's gonna come out to in festivals soon and if you do please watch it i mean it's it's a really really good film i mean it's a cross cultural story of you know philippines and japanese oh, very cool so i wanted to ask you how easy was it to sell this story with such wild sci-fi elements to it 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 wasn't (laughs) it wasn't (laughs) it wasn't it was a tough sell yeah actually um we were um i think around 2019 when the first draft of the film was finished and now i i was pitching it to festivals and getting fundings for it but it seems nothing seems to be panning panning out Mm. and then the pandemic happened right um we were talking to investors from different countries, but none of them seemed to be interested with it. So I had more time to work on it. But I guess it was just the timing. Um, when we submitted it to Cinemalaya in 2021, um, we got selected there. And then things fell into place, I guess. Um, after that, we got... Um, extra funding from poor in pictures and we got other fundings from private investors so i would say at first it was tough mm. <laughs> to sell it i mean if, uh, in the philippines it's quite rare to see animated films yeah. um we're lucky if we get one a year yeah. and plus it's very hard to sell it to production companies because they know that animation is it takes a long time to finish it it's very expensive but but i guess it just it's just the timing when we made this but uh it all came into play right mm-hmm. people the money came in people were interested in it uh even the actors we didn't have like a hard time um bringing in Carlo Aquino, Gio Cajal, and mm-hmm. Dale De Leon on board. So, uh, I pitched the story to them and then somehow they loved it. So mm. <laughs> that's why I ended up working with them. So here in the States, we've had a very, very long, but non-mainstream relationship with queer films. And I was just mm-hmm. wondering, like, what is that relationship like from filmmakers to audiences in the Philippines? Like, did that make this an Mm. even harder sell? I think it's, we're, we're warming up to this kinds of film Mm. and this kinds of films, LGBTQ, especially during the pandemic, the, the BL kind of series were, were kind of hit here in the Philippines. I guess that set us up when we, then when we shown this film actually back in I mean early this year, August, um, two of the top grocers in the festival, the Cinemalaya, the one I was talking to you about, were uh, queer films. Mm. So uh, we were the uh, first one, and then the second one is a lesbian of a volleyball film. So um, I guess, um, uh, well, before it was harder to show these kinds of films, but I guess through time, I think. There are the, the the Philippines has the Philippine audience has come to terms to it. Like um, even in Netflix or in other streaming services, um, the the you would see the list of the top films that or top series that are you know hits in the Philippines. You sometimes there are um, queer related um, 
films or series that are shown in there mm. or part of those lists. So I guess um yeah, we're warming up to it. Plus uh uh I remember uh, they shown all of us strangers here. Okay. I think last month. Okay. Yeah, I haven't and even seen that. I wasn't one. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't able to get the ticket uh, because, you know, uh, only a few hours and then all of the seats are taken. Right, so. <laughs> right, 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 right. So you said that you kind of wake up out of hibernation and make another film. And I know, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> this film is obviously requiring work of you doing interviews and <laughs> talking mm-hmm. about it and everything like that. <laughs> So I don't want to say, hey, what do you have coming next? Because, you know, who knows what you have coming next? But do you see yourself kind of going into another period of, you know, working, and, you know, <laughs> not jumping right into another film? Or are you jumping right into something? Um, actually, um, the, my second animated film was um, Animation Musical. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also for adults. Um, I, I first... I've been meaning to adapt that to theater, theater. So I want to make a theater musical oh, okay. adaptation of my second animated film. So, so not even film, just, uh, like, well, just a theater show, not like a play. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope. <laughs> I hope. I hope. I've been. I'm talking to uh, the people about it. So hopefully, I get to do it. Okay. As for film. I'm writing stories and reading scripts of other people, but nothing is um, grabbing my attention right now. But I'm writing a new story. Uh, probably it's going to take longer, but uh, I'll take my time. Cool. Yeah, and I feel like m- normally people go from working in the theater to working in film, so this is an interesting <laughs> progression. <laughs> <laughs> I want to try it. I mean, just once before I die, like sure, sure. <laughs> I get to to adapt it or probably direct uh, a theater musical soon. That's awesome. That's awesome. Are you a big musical head? N- not really, because um, they, I, I guess those kinds of films are not accessible to mm. the Philippines. I'm not sure if they're gonna show the color purple here, but mm. you know, I'm I'm ready. Yeah, I, I know the songs. I'm gonna <laughs> sing in my head. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love musicals actually, so I'm excited to see to see yeah, color purple or other films. So. Sure. Do you have any recommendations for musicals? Yeah, I do actually. I'll I'll email you. I have a. I have a whole list on Letterbox of just musicals that I like because I love musicals, oh, wow. but I'm not big into like The Sound of Music or West Side Story. I mean, those are clearly all time great films, but mm. yeah, for me, like I just I want music musicals that have really good songs, and I feel like sometimes the songs are not that great. So, <laughs> but I'll, I'll I'll email you a list of of recommendations. How about one? Did you like? Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 I do. (laughs) You got the poster right behind you. Yeah. Once. uh, Yeah. yeah, That made that movie made me cry a few times. There were elements of it that felt very reminiscent of when I was making music with different people. Mm. Um, When they finish and they put the cassette in their car and just drive around and like listen to it, I was like, I listen to. That's something that unless you've done that before, you wouldn't know that that's something people do. It's like, oh, well, I got to listen to it in the car. So, but yeah. Actually, I recently saw Flora, Flora and Son. Flora and Son? Oh, yeah. I haven't, I haven't seen that one yet. Was it good? Yeah. It's also, yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah. The songs are also good. Very cool. But yeah, once it's way, way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a masterpiece for me. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> It's a silly thing to ask because, of course, you want to get into that top five. Of course, you want to win. <laughs> yeah. But like when you set out to make this movie, I doubt you were thinking this will be nominated for the Oscar. No, <laughs> far from it. Um, I only had like the, cin- the, the festival screening in mind. And I knew that that was our main goal and anything that comes after it is uh, just plus right so this one is a 
big plot. Right, this is a big <laughs> yeah. Who the yeah, who would expect that, you know? Yeah. Th- when we were making this it's going to be selected, so So do you find cuz you know, different different creative people have different personality types. Do you find that you are and you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, but do you find that you're enjoying being the director and also doing this promotion for it or is this kind of like the last thing on earth that you want to be doing <laughs> <laughs> actually i'm enjoying the interactions with with other people like um getting to meet uh, people and talking i mean to, like you um i enjoy talking with other people about films and about our film mm. i get to share our side of the story of how we made this film and how it is like here in the philippines the filmmaking or the film industry in there here in the philippines and then the, the people i talk to i get they get to share things to me as well so i i savor that kind of uh, uh in interaction with other people but it gets tiring at times yeah. but yeah that's why yeah i have to um, um disconnect myself for a while and then later i'll go back yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just kept thinking about poor uh poor Greta Gerwig this year, you know. You go through all the process <laughs> of making this massive film and then everyone is asking you, you know, nonstop for more sound bites and more interviews and not, you know, it's like I I imagine it's like, all right, I did my work. <laughs> now let me go. <laughs> well, hey man, thank you very much for, you know, talking to me. Thank you for making this film. Uh, I'm excited to see whatever you have coming down. You know, if you've got uh, a stage play or whatever shakes <laughs> out, you know, I'm very excited. I think once you see someone who's made something like this, you know, for me at least, you'll be a director that if I hear, oh, this is coming out, you know, from Carl Joseph Papa, I'll be like, well, yeah, I'm going to check it out. Definitely. Wow. I'll definitely um, reach out to you again. I mean, if it's, if- I have something new, then yeah, I hope I get to share it with you guys again. Yeah. And best of luck. If, you know? if ever if I ever get to do that the other thing, I'll you know, I'll record it and post it on YouTube. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> Very bootleggy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey man, best of luck. Whatever happens, you've still made an incredible film. And to me, that's the most important thing. That's the thing that we remember, you know? Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, and also thank you for taking time to interview me. It means a lot. Hey, of course, man. Thank you again to Carl. And I hope that if you listen to this, you're inspired to seek out his work and also some of the other Filipino films that he recommended. And if you went to school for something other than filmmaking, maybe you should save up your first few checks and buy yourself a camera. You may end up surprised who finds your work and where it takes you just like Carl. Thank you very much for listening. Have a good one. Movie Friends is produced by Seth Vargas and Michelle Rubenstein. Music by Anthony Vicora. If you like the show, please subscribe and give us a rating. It really helps us find new friends. Thanks.